Okay, let me do the ignition uh, module now. So this is an Ultima ignition single power kit. Kind of look like those. Kind of a box full of crap like this. And here's the module. So these are made by Dyna. At least these ones are. They're uh, Dyna 2000 I ignition module that these are. So they're still made by Dyna as far as I know. So they seem to work pretty good. We have too many problems with them. So we need to look at the instructions a little bit. And we need the timing cup. And the bolt is buried in there. We need these parts here to make it work. So the timing cup goes into the camshaft in there. And then we have to pre-program this to what we want to do. The instructions for programming are right here. And they also are in the instruction sheet over here. So, depending on what you need. And these are for electric start only. <clears throat> if you want to do a kick start, you have to reprogram with a computer. And then when you do that, it shuts off to the spot switches on the side of it. The switches don't work anymore. So your choice on how you want to do it. If you buy the kit from me, I'll put a custom ignition curve in there for kicking purposes. If you buy it from somebody else, yeah, you're on your own. Good luck. So it takes this kind of a coil here. Single fire has three leads. Dual fire has two leads. Dual fire means it fires both at once. Single fire means it fires one at a time. It does not mean it has twin coils. That's not dual fire. Okay, so these are the ignition curves. So it looks like your top curve is 34 degrees ignition lead. Is all you're going to get on it. This is your vacuum advance. It still tops out at 34 degrees. It just it gets more here at the lower RPM. So if you put the VO switch on it, which is a vacuum operated switch, you get all this extra timing at low speed, which makes the bike run better. And if you want to know where it runs better at, it runs better under 2500. See, that's 2500. So above 2500, no difference. Under makes a difference. Now, if you reprogram the ignition on the computer, you have up to 40 degrees ignition lead max. And then I'll show you how to cheat to get more. Now, Sportster motors run at on the down CC motors, they're 39 degree timing, which started on the 73 flywheels, so 72s had the early stuff on them. The early flywheels are the Dash 57 flywheel, they run 45 degree ignition timing. So if you take the 1000 cc motor and put it up to the 45 degrees, it runs a lot better. They change it because of gasoline. They run better at 45 degrees. And you always kick it back more and get 49 to 50 degrees, make them running better. It's like having a high compression motor then. So basically this is this ignition tops out at 34. So how do you go from 34 to 39 or to 45? You have to cheat. So I'll show you how to cheat. Now the timing of the motor. If you read all this stuff right here, it tells you what all the switches mean. So we'll set that right now. If I don't need switches because I have the actual instructions right here in the module tell you the same thing so you need a little screwdriver or something to flip them with I usually just use my pocket knife it works good so first thing is you're gonna have both switch or no bow switch eh, right now we're not using it so retard is on normal is off so off is down so I'm gonna leave it on off that's just if you put a bow switch on it'll work Right now, if you hook a switch to it, turn it on and off, it retards it like a nitro system, it'll automatically retard. You want a high gear retard for high speed, you can set it that way too. However, you want to do it. Okay, switch number two is for your curve. Curve number one, which is always where I start, is off. So right now they're on. So you have to go down here and slide them to off.
They changed their shapes here a little bit. My knife doesn't fit here anymore. That kind of sucks. Well, we'll use something different. We had the scribe right here I was going to use for something else in a minute. We'll use that. It has a sharp edge. Oh, look at that. It works great. Okay, the first three are off. So that means we're on normal operation, which is a bow switch, and off off means we are on curve number one. We're gonna go fast. Rev limiter. Yeah, high she can go is seven thousand. Damn, this motor should run higher than that. That sucks. So to go up higher than that, you have to go on a computer. When like I said, when you use a computer, all these switches don't work no more. So we're gonna set it for seven thousand because that's all we can get. So that's on on. They're already on 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 already. The last thing is, how do you want to have it? Single fire or dual fire? Single fire is on. We want on. So there you go, it's on. So we got three off, three on. Simple. Not too hard to figure this stuff out. Okay, next thing is we got a timing cup. You got to put the cup on it. Now these cups are out of habit of breaking right now, the way they're made. All the cups are having the same problem, so. Manufacturing issue. Even when the cups look like they're made by different people, they're still breaking. No matter how the cam is made. Okay, so here are some new post. I like these. Might use those. Here's the screw that holds it together. This looks better than it used to be. Maybe they improved it. Get to hold it in. Got two ratchet. So it used to be this would not fit into the cams. The threads were kind of screwy. Let's see if they fixed the problem. It appears they fixed the problem. Goes right in, no problem at all. Here was a problem for a year or two there. Okay, so it looks like the new screws fit. That's a plus. Okay, next problem is is the timing cup. So it has a little notch right here, and it goes in a notch in the flywheel down here on the uh, camshaft. Get down here and see better. Uh, hopefully you can see better. Let's see. Yeah, you can see fine. So I think what's happening is is the timing cup is not going on the into the cam far enough causing some breakage issues now you gotta make sure it goes on the cup on the cam there it doesn't want to go so the difference is is the height of the cam uh, the height of that shoulder versus the height of inside of here some of the bikes were bottoming out and the it was bending the cup inward, causing it to break. Now this one here looks like it's pretty deep. So I don't know if it's gonna be an issue. Ah. So we're gonna grab our caliper here, measure our depth. 153. So now we measure this cup depth. 168 171 Okay, and this was how much? This way 148 154 It helps you hold it straight 147. Okay, so this cup is 20 thou. That was 186 that time. 190. What the hell is going on here? It's getting worse. 178. 
170. It helps to hold it square, I guess. 170. On that side and this side. 173. So that's 20 thou difference. So when you tighten this down, this here is going 20 thou more. And that's causing a stress fracture, and they're fracturing down inside the radius is where they're breaking easily. I've had a couple break on the top, but easy to break on the inside. Not sure why they're doing that. So if you put a little washer in there, it might hold this up enough to keep it off the edge. Probably as most washers are more than 20 thou. It'd be a pretty thin washer. So you have to figure out how you're going to make that fly. The other problem is that notch gets kind of in the way a little bit too. Now if you space it off the cam and it's on that little snout, then this whole thing might flex and break on the outside edge. So it's kind of a toss up where to do it. So I don't know what to do on these things. We're playing around with these things and I don't have a common fix yet that seems to work on everybody. But they are breaking. Okay, right now we are in there. As I tighten up, it squeezes in further. So it dimples it in pretty good. About 20 thou worth. But uh, that seems to be what we're going to have to do these days. So we'll see how long this one lives. All right, so that's your timing cup. What happens is when the steel goes through here, it triggers a magnet system in here and it tells the ignition module tells you where you're at. All right. So this timing edge here goes up here on these marks up under here. So this has to go in there like this. Obviously the screws are top and bottom. So it goes in there like that. And you back it up as far as it'll go. And that's how you put it in there. Now you leave a little extra wire just on the top so you don't have any drag on. You got room to flex. You got room to pull it off to work on the cup or whatever you gotta do. If you make it really tight, it just makes it hard. Okay, these are his old screws here. Which are his original ones, so we're probably gonna just go use those. No reason to use the stuff we're not gonna use. I got two thin washers and two thicks. I'm not sure why he's got this nut on there. My guess is probably because it was sitting up too high. Or he's got some kind of a custom cover. Not sure. I'm going to leave the nut out for now. See what it looks like installed. There's where the nuts installed. See how far the screwdriver has to go down? Instead of being here, it's way down here. So this this is way below our gasket surface. So what's happening is when you put a cover on here, the cover is only is hitting on the outside edge and not here, so the bolt's not really tight, so it comes up. It'll vibrate and fall out because it's loose. So what they did is they put the two nuts under there to or one nut under each one to bring up the height you needed. So that's why they did this. That's how they had it. Problem is, only got one nut. I don't know where the other one's at. That doesn't leave very many threads. And now we're the other direction. We're too high. OK, 
Okay, where's those other ones at? These ones are also tall. Same problem. So we've got a little more thread height, which is going to help us. And these are getting rounded out. These are new, so we're going to go to new ones here. But I still have a height issue. So instead of going back and forth trying to figure this out, I'm going to take our depth mic here, caliper, and go down until we hit. We're about 882. This is 800. So you said about 80 thou thickness. Then that's 125, which is way too much. Two washes, 67, 72, that's 10 thou off. <clears throat> that's probably, probably close enough to use. <clears throat> this has a thicker washer here. 75, same number. Yeah, a little bit more. This one's, yep, 75. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to leave out the nut. I'll use the two washers. That should put us within 10 thou. Most covers will flex in 10 thou. Go with it at that number. That's about 13 thou, actually. But otherwise, I have to find some thicker washers and play around and come up with something else to use. Now one problem I've come across before if the wash is too big in diameter you can't put it together. It hits on the side of the module in there. So you gotta be careful on your module size or your washer size. Okay so these go down now. What the hell I measured because we're still way below the surface. Something was not measured correctly there. It's hard to get good help, it's a problem. Good zero. Hmm. Seven seven. Eight seventy four. What the hell did I do wrong? Seven sixty. Which one did I measure was at eight hundred? This one's eight hundred. So the stock one, if you use it, comes out correctly. The aftermarket ones are different. Nice. What a shocker, things aren't original. There's 885, that's 10 thou up. 5 thou up. So this one's 5 thou too tall, which might work. We've only got one. Or we use the stock ones and just put two washers in there, which I kind of like better. Yep, that's short. Well, this one's short too, 745. Only this one's long. <laughs> Wonderful. Nothing like consistency. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna go find me another nut. I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Took a long time to find something. Okay, here's the old nut. It was tight on the thread, so I had to go cut the thread and ream it out a little bit. Wait, I just did the the help. I just got done reaming it out and it's still tight. Great. Okay, well this nut has to float because it hits inside the module in here. So I just fix this. Alright, I'm going back over here. Obviously the reamer I use is not big enough. You have to go bigger. Point we're going to be big enough to do something. So this is the one I just put in there. So this is the next size bigger. think I'd have to do, but oh well. hand reaming. Works now. A pain in the ass having to do that. Now if you use a fine threaded nut it has a bigger hole to it. Coarse thread has a smaller hole. So the fine thread nut works on the other one. But I only had the one to use. So we spent an extra 10 minutes making this nut work. Now we're gonna have to buy a 10 cent nut, 20 cent nut, wherever you gotta find a nut at for whatever. Okay, so now when it hits the module, it'll still rotate and tighten, whereas before it was thread onto here, it wouldn't work. Okay, lots of problems. Weeding our way through them. Okay, gonna be fully retarded to make this work. Can't go full retard and get right to here. Okay, now we're right on our edge here. Feels almost flush. Because now we are flush. You can see the edge of the bolt there. It's flush with the shoulder right here where the cover goes on. So now it will pull in there tight and correctly. Okay, so. It only took about 20 minutes. No wonder I make so much money around here. A half hour making crappy hardware work. Just to make something a little bit better. Oh well. It's a good thing I don't give a squat, right? Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next project. Not that. Okay, now we're going to have to make our timing work. So remember this module only goes to 34 degrees timing. That's out of the box. This motor wants 45 degrees timing, it comes with 39 degrees. So we're short five. And 11 more would be nice. So what we do is you go over here. Find top dead center on the compression stroke, very key, which we're on right now. So, lifters are not moving on the front cylinder, so this is the top dead center. Pretty close to there. Where's the mark at? Yeah, it looks like pretty close. 
So here's the fun part. Uh, there's our t TDC mark right there. Okay, this window is 8 degrees wide on the inside of thread to inside of thread. It's 10 degrees if you go behind the thread. Okay, we need to gain 12 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back right to there, which is a full 5 degrees back, because the center of the hole is right even with the thread. Not on the inside, but even with it. See the mark back there? It's halfway through. Okay, now we take our scribe right here. Now this is just an old drill bit that I cut off and then sharpened so it's semi-hard. So what I do is I go up here and I cheat and I make a crescent mark on my flywheel by scribing it. Okay, so now there's a mark in there. So now, when you turn the flywheel, see that scribe mark? So you got five degrees here. We're basically on a four degree mark right here, kind of, or maybe five, depending on where you're at. Looks like it's probably five in the middle, four on the bottom. So if we go right to the middle here, there's five more degrees. That's 10 degrees more timing in the ignition module. So instead of the module being at 44 degrees, or 30, 34 degrees over there, we're at 44 degrees right now. See how I did that? Now if you want to give it a little extra power yet, you put it all the way back of the hole over here, and you'll pick up another four more degrees. That'll give us 47 degrees timing, or 48 degrees, excuse me, which will make it run really good. So we're going to put it right in here, which is 10 degrees extra, so that's 44 degrees timing. So I'm going to leave it there because they can find that mark pretty easy. But like I said, they can put the back of the hole and pick up some more. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So that's going to cheat. So now this piston, instead of being TDC, is down the hole. So you, you lead it a little bit. Now if you put the ignition modules like the instruction says, it'll be retarded and it'll run like crap and run hot. And not very good. So even though it will fit into the bike, it's not correct for the bike because the darn module is not timed for a Sportster. It's timed for a shovel head and an Evo, which is not what we're running here. There you go. That's how you cheat. Make sure you put that back in there if you don't damage it. And that works pretty good. Take the plug out so we can see where we're at. Let's go back over to the other side over here. Okay, now we got time this thing. Okay, here's our wires. So we gotta figure out what the wiring color codes are. Harley likes white wire being hot. We're going to use this setup here. So, looks like the white wire is hot. See how it says plus 12? So, we're going to use the white wire, which is this one right here. See, it's white. So, I'm going to strip it down. We're going to take our handy dandy pencil here. Mark that on there like that. That's going to be our hot wire. Always like having ground wire on the hot, so make sure it doesn't get grounded. This here's a battery. 12 volt. In case you thought it might have been a six. Of course, that will not come up. I don't want to. One safety device out of the way. Okay, this is our hot wire. Boom. Now, nothing works without a ground. So this is our ground. We hooked this up, this light should come on down here. This back down here in the bottom, we can see a little bit. Find the ground. Okay, our light's on. 
Now, when that light goes off, the timing is set. So the first thing we do is loosen this up so we can rotate it. We've got to figure out what the sweet spot is. Sweet spot's right there, see? So you back it up just a little bit. Put a little bit of drag on the screws here. Not too much, just a little bit. I need a screwdriver. Okay, so now I gotta go over here. And we have the little grooves right up in here. So the screwdriver blade goes in here and you rotate it. And it'll shove the plate forward or backwards, depending on which way you go. You have to have a relatively small tip to get in here. So now we're just going to rotate this. Let me just go the other hand. So I want to rotate the advanced direction, which is this way. So I'm going to rotate it until that red light goes out. Turn the light off so you can see. It kills my light, but you can see the red light real nice now. Just barely rotate it until it goes out. Right there. <clears throat> and you lock this thing down right here. And it's timed. Kill the power. Rotate this around. Make sure we're still where we want it to be in the center. Looks pretty good to me. So it's timed. I'm going to fire where we want it to at 44 degrees timing. So it should run pretty healthy there. Okay, now we got to make sure those screws are good and tight. Tight. And tight. Okay, that's locked down. And the last thing I like to do is mark it so we know where we're at. So, just take a felt tip pen. There's a place to get in there to mark it. You mark it. This one here does not have a good place to mark it. Let's see if I actually did anything under there. It might not have marked. Yep, there it is. See, I marked it. So now when you line that mark up, you should be pretty close to where we got it set right now. So you don't change it. Now when you change that, a half a line or a full line, it makes a difference on your timing. So usually it's a couple degrees if you go half a line. To a full line, depending on what the bike is, what diameter it is. But Roughly, it'll give you more smart timing. So at least now you got a reference point to where stock is for what we got to set out of stock, which is 44 degrees. So anyway, that's how you do that. So you know exactly where the timing's at. You know you could mark it on the black with a felt tip, but there's no way of knowing. But I can mark it over here. So I put 44 dog, that'd be 44 degrees. And I said that's, you have to look up there for the mark way up under there. And I could have marked it way on the bottom too if I wanted to, but this is up close to the scribe marks here, so that's why I put it way up there. But you can put it in either spot. You just have to know where it is. All right, so that's how you set the timing for the ultimate ignition on an Ironhead Sportster. Like I said, the other way of doing it is you do it with a computer and you change everything and then all these switches don't work no more and you can you stop to fudge it because you only can get 40 degrees so but that's only one foot you, that one you just have to move it all the way back of the hole and it'll block it down you don't have to put the crescent cut so it's just different ways of doing it so we can we like playing around here just a little bit okay let me get this all cleaned up and then we'll put the heads on <laughs>